Hi guys, I'm Jody Hand, Mrs. Hand Painted, and I apologize if you've been following my channel for a while and I haven't posted a video for a couple of weeks, but I have been very, very busy and I haven't had much quiet time to film. Uh, we have a brand new little member of our family here, Bandit. So if you uh, have followed me on Instagram, you know that our previous kitty passed away in July and we just adopted Bandit here a few weeks ago from a local rescue. Uh, so I have also been doing something really, really fun for me and has been really fulfilling to try out a new uh, area of art and it's actually making my own watercolor paints. Uh, as you know, a lot of my videos I use professional quality Daniel Smith paints, but I wanted just to give it a go and see about making my own handmade watercolors and it has been so fun and I am loving the results. And in today's video, I'll be using my very own paints that I made and I'm actually going to be using one of these little dot sample cards that you can purchase in my Etsy shop and I have a link to that down in the description. So if you haven't tried out any handmade colors and you want to give this a try, I do have these available for sale. And I'm also doing a giveaway. So if you see this video before uh, Sunday, October 4th, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Mrs. Hand Painted, and like my post about the giveaway. And you could win one of these and a free half pan of any watercolor paint that I have available in my shop right now. So it's a really great prize I'm giving away. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram already, please do so. And uh, follow me, like my post, and share it with your friends for some extra entries as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start this tutorial. And we're going to be painting uh, this really fun bushel basket that's full of fall flowers with a little pumpkin. I think this will make a really, really great fall card or if you're sending out cards for Thanksgiving because you're not spending the time with your family due to the pandemic. Uh, that's something that I plan on doing is sending out cards to a lot of my family we won't be seeing. So try this one out. It's really fun and you can paint it all with just those colors on my dot card. So I really look forward to this new venture I'm taking and oh, owie. Say hello to Bandit. Bye Bandit. Say bye. Thanks for watching guys. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and start out. I'll just go over my little supplies here. I've got my little dot card that you can purchase at my Etsy shop, or you can buy the whole uh, tin set if you really, really like the colors, or you could just try out some samples. Uh, and then I've got my watercolor sketchbook that has, this is Fabriano paper inside of it that I made uh, with a Coptic stitch binding. And then I have my Princeton Neptune round four. And I just got a little uh, ceramic plate and some water jars here. And then I have a Faber-Castell graphite aquarelle pencil. It's a water-soluble graphite pencil. And I'm just going to use that just to sketch out the little basket. So I'm just going to make kind of a cup shape and then curve down the bottom. I'm doing it really lightly. Um, it's kind of like you would draw like a, a glass, but we're just going to make a really short little basket. And then I'll kind of make a line in the middle of where I want that um, Drip that'll go across the, the middle of it. Alright. So to start, I'm going to do the pumpkin that I want to put in front, and then I'll do the flowers and then we'll do the basket last. So the pumpkin, I'm going to use the pumpkin pie, which is a orange iron oxide color. So it's a really, really pretty burnt orange. You really don't need a whole lot. These dots are going to be able to give you a lot of paint. Even if you're just doing the sample dots, it gives you a lot of paint to play around with and test out. So to do my first little pumpkin, I'm going to do an oval. And then I like to leave just a little bit of a white gap in between my sections, just to kind of give it some definition. Now make these little crescent shapes around the outside. If you need to make your little oval a little longer, if you go too long, I just did that. And I'm just going to do another little crescent. It doesn't go quite as far to the bottom. I want to come up above that last layer. So it'll kind of be showing you what's behind. And then just putting a little dab in there. I'm going to let that dry. And then I can come back and add my stem. All right, I am going to go back and forth between, I think I'll do that kind of like a red, 
the cranberry, the plum, and the sage together, and then we can add maybe some little uh, like straw or wheat sprigs coming out of the top here. All right, so I'm gonna go in with the plum. And this one is a, a mix that I made and it's got um, ultramarine violet and uh, red iron oxide mixed together to give me a really pretty plum that's got a little bit of opacity to it, but it's still very transparent. All right, so we're just gonna do some kind of random little flower shapes in here. And really you can just kind of um, make some small little strokes and then have some upstrokes going around it. I don't know, hard. I don't really know all the art terms for how you make these uh, paint strokes, but I'm just going to make a stroke up, kind of turning my brush to the side, and then I'm the tip just adding some little, like little swoop lines around it. And I kind of want to make this a little bit rounded, and then we could have some that are just like spilling around the outside. I'm just kind of use that little sketch that we put in there as a little bit of a guide. All right, so now I'm going to get some of this cranberry color, and this is um, a single pigment pigment red. I forget now off the top of my head what it was, but it's like a uh, like almost like a Bordeaux color. I'll just do some of the same flower shapes in there and just kind of pack them in there and then we'll add some green in between. All right, and then I'll take the straw bale, which is, um, this is another single pigment. This one is a yellow ochre light. And it's a very, very light color. I do need to add Quite a bit more water to it to get it going. Some of these ochre shades are a little bit harder to get going with the water. So I'm going to make maybe a few little um, just quick streaks going upward. And kind of as you're going off to the left, have them veer toward the left and as on the right and then just like that. So then I'm just going to dab along the top edges of that. It'd be like, just like what you'd see on some people's like little floral arrangements. They have some of those dry grasses in the middle. Just a nice little accent. And if you want to fill in more, uh, maybe add some of the brown in there just to give it a little more color. I might do that here. And add some little dashes right down here. Okay. I'm going to go in and get some green in there. The sage is another mix that I made. Um, and this one, let me grab my little swatch cards here so I can remember what I made it with. <laughs> oh, the cranberry is a pigment red 12. Uh, the straw bale is pigment yellow 43. And the acorn is burnt umber, which is pigment brown 7. The sage is, I made with pigment yellow 74, pigment blue 15, which is phthalo blue, pigment red 112, and a little bit of pigment white just to um, the titanium dioxide. And yet yeah, the plum, again, was the pigment violet 15, which is ultramarine violet with the red iron oxide, which is red 101. And the pumpkin pie um, is also a pigment red, and so it's basically the red iron oxide and the yellow ochre together. Uh, different, or... or I guess they would say a yellow iron oxide, not a yellow ochre, excuse me. Okay, so I'm getting some of this sage together. It's a really, really pretty light green color. And what's nice about this is they're all um, mixed up for you. Uh, you can blend some of them together. They, they'll be totally fine doing that. But if you are wanting to do some quick little fall cards, they give you all the perfect colors to make some little fall paintings. And I'm just going to add in some little leaf shapes here and there. Just to kind of fill in all that white space. You can have some coming up off the top and have some overhanging along the bottom would look nice. And then we'll fill in with brown um, and the yellow for the basket. Okay, so I also want to add just a little bit of a leaf here on top of my pumpkin. And then I'm going to get some of the acorn, which is again the burnt umber. I 
Yeah, I don't need a whole lot here. I'm going to add in, now this pumpkin is dry so I won't get any bleeding. I'm just going to add my little stem and just kind of flare it out there. Alright, now I can go back in and uh, do my basket. So I'm going to do kind of a mixture with the straw bale and the acorn here. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this straw bale here. So I'm just going to go along the outside edges of my basket and I'm going around the items that I have here. I'm going to make some sections of my basket here. I'll just kind of uh, go by eye there. I'm not really in any specific measurement. So if you uh, are kind of a stickler about things being even, you could measure those out when you draw your sketch, but uh, that's not really my style. So, all right, so now I'm gonna go back over with the burnt umber and notice how I left white in there. I don't want this to be completely filled in. I wanna leave some white sections. So I'm just kind of going back over the same spots that I just did the burnt umber with, or the yellow ochre with, the, the straw bale shade. Get a little bit more of that. And just very lightly with the tip of my brush, I'm just adding some little streaks in there. But I want mainly, I want that yellow to show through. And I'm still doing that when it's wet, so it's just bleeding in together really nicely. And just add some little stripes just to make that pop. And even take a little bit of that brown and just kind of highlight your sections of your pumpkin too a little bit if you want just to give that a little more interest in fact i'm going to go back over my pumpkin and add a few little lines coming down just to give it a little more dimension and then i'm going to go back in uh, and fill in a little bit more of this white area so uh, any places that you have some really white openings, you can add some of that plum or the cranberry back in, just kind of dabbing it in. Uh, it's, it's not a super detailed up close painting, so you would, when you're actually looking at it from afar, you would just see the colors. You, you would see some larger flower shapes, but you'd mostly see just the, the color in there. I'm just going to dab some of that in there just to fill in. You can add a little bit more of our sage green. And I have an incoming kitten. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You want to look? Okay, and I want to just fill in a little bit more of that white. Hunter, are you trying to uh, video bomb here? No, no paint water. No paint water for you. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, that is all I think. You know what? Before I stop, I want to add a little bit more brown. So I'm just going to do a little bit more diluted here. I'm just going to add in a few little thin strokes. Hold this kitty cat out of the way here. Just to kind of fill in and give that little straw grassy bits some more dimension. And if you get too much water, like I just did down here, I'm just going to kind of spread that out a little bit more. <coughs> there we go, guys. That turned out really, really cute. And I think this will make a really great fall card. Oh, gosh, she's hitting this and making it shake. I'm so sorry. All right. <laughs> I, I've been holding off doing videos for a while here because I never get any peace and quiet. And everybody's always bugging me, including this new kitten. So uh, I really appreciate you bearing with me here. If it was shaking on the end of the video, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but thank you for joining me here on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. It really helps me out to hear feedback from you guys. And if you want to share your paintings with me, please do so. You can tag me on Instagram, Mrs. Hand Painted.